All right, okay. so when we last left Are off, you having issues thinking you're hearing voices. No, 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 no. For for Twitch. Uh, so when we last always hearing voices. When we last left off, uh, you guys had been traveling down the river, uh, passed by a few things until eventually, in a more cloudy section of the river, a giant crocodile came up out of the water and dragged Santana off to his death. Your party mourned, uh, burned the body, and divided up, you know, decided that it is not safe to be traveling on the river anymore. Well, the river kind of ends here anyway. <laughs> Went farther enough to make camp. Off the river. No, no. I think we've already made camp, and then it was started. We started off uh, the next morning. Yeah, yeah and, totally. and currently Arya and Thunk are holding the canoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's continue forward. Can I hold my canoe like over, like uh, with my arms stretched out, or? Just resting the middle part of my head so I can provide an umbrella for some people to walk under. Sure. You just remember the people that are holding the canoes, uh, you still have to put them down before you can draw your weapon for, for, for battle. Except for me. It's called a battering ram. <laughs> and yeah, you I thought that was your. It, it would take all of now your maneuverability away. I have a, I have Warcaster, so I can cast a spell while my hands are full. In fact, it might, it, it might be a good idea to make Dozel and uh, and Kyle uh, carry the canoes. Since currently, the, uh, well, Kyle's an NPC is, uh, to begin with, and Dozel is currently being NPC'd. And it would be much easier for for, G, for the GM to deal with Dozel carrying the canoe. Dozel can right, technically so those... carry both, because he should be strong enough to carry the it's not. It, it's not the, nothing to do with the strength. It has everything to do with the with with the bulk of the canoe itself. Yeah, Maneuver, maneuverability also. Yeah, you, you, there's no way you'll be able to carry two canoes unless you're very tall. All right, so those will carry one, which the three frees up funk. I stand. I stand by the fact that uh, Aria can cast magic without with using both hands. All right, so Dozel and Arya are now carrying the canoes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, there goes my. Besides, battery. Kyle is actually useful in the fight. I'm good until when somebody gets injured. <laughs> I thought you were about to say I was useless, and I was like, "You son of a." <laughs> but I'm not a male. I'm a girl. So, Airbus, uh, give me a perception check. Sorry, I'm currently in the middle of trying to get him. Okay. If you want to get to, to give it a minute, I'll I'll just move move along here then. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so roll me a perception check, folks. Whoever's keeping keep, keep an eye on things. I rolled a sixteen. I rolled twenty-five. Should that be a disadvantage considering you have a canoe over your head? I got closer to one than all of y'all. Yes, that would actually be a disadvantage, Smug. Alright, I'll roll again. There goes my free nat 20. Yep. Okay. What would you call the shape of the vertebral body? The what? Of oh, the what? The vertebral body. Do we have options? I mean, if you know what the vertebrae look like in the vertebral section of the spine, then yeah. You like a highway. I don't know. Alright. So, as you guys are walking along, uh, Devlin 
Uh, and, um, Arya, you both see the head of a giant constrictor snake looking like it's about ready to to to, to jump out and attack Devlin. Um, I'm gonna... You know what? Dodge. I'm going to do it. I'm going to ca- call out to it um saying, "What you about? What you doing there?" Uh you know, speak with you... animals. Yeah, I've okay, so I cast that so that uses one of my um Evoke spell parcel slots. tongue. All right. So the snake <laughs> the, 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 the the snake stops it as, as its jaws are opening up uh in kind of an obvious manner because it <laughs> thinks it's hidden, but it's really not. Uh Trying to, to to open up wide enough to swallow the the, the human. Well, is Devlin a human? Well, the yes, humanish, the, the human or the human looking person. Uh, and immediately it's like you got the comical eye just shifting towards Arya's direction as the tongue flops out and the jaws are just wide and it kind of stops there. This is... I. <laughs> It, it said yes in a very hissy, hard to talk voice. What? What you doing? I don't think you want to eat him. You don't know where he's been. I see. I know where he's been, and he's been in some not very good places. When may when? Roll persuasion. Persuasion. All right. Let's with my plus one. Let's see. Hmm. The snake slowly closes its jaws, flicking its, t- its tongue out as it rolls its eyes back towards uh, Dozel. Still looks tasty. Have I seen it yet? Uh, no, thank you, haven't. Uh, <laughs> but you are, did, did hear Arya talk to somebody and you couldn't hear hear what, any response? Well, okay, like, at I... least Devlin's gonna back away slowly from the snake. I, I kind of looked to Dozel and like, but he's wearing a, a lot of armor. That's gonna be very hard Dozel. to digest. Yeah. Devlin. Devlin? I thought, was... I thought, it was I thought you said Dozel. Uh, if I did, I meant to say Devlin. Alright. I'm gonna cast um, I, I... and move 30 feet away from him also. Okay. Can anybody alert me? Because I want to cut the head off the snake. Well, you would notice uh, Devlin acting strange and backing away from something. Um, are we kind of... We, uh, hang on, we didn't eat the giant crocodile, did we? No, it got away. Before we did it. No, no, you, I you killed, killed it, it and then I dragged it up. I killed it. Remember, I killed uh, him and the, dragged the, it the, up. This is this is oh. like a, this is like a, a, a you know a half a day later. Yes, but did we eat it? Because if the, we didn't eat the giant crocodile, it, it's then... hours. It, it's it's the, the body is hours away. You didn't pick it up and carry it with you. No, I'm. I'm what, hang on. Let me do this. It's like, well, if you want to slither a bit, um, there's a body of a giant crocodile free for the taking down by the mouth of the river. It'd be probably much better than dev than uh, this human here. She kind of points R- over to roll percep uh, roll persuasion again. Let's hope. Well, yep. The snake uh, moves away, moves away, and there's a small thanks on on the wind. I would call after it. Good luck. Then I kind of sigh, like, all right. And I'm so... All right. All right. So, any reaction from Thunk, uh, having watched uh, Arya say all this? Not that you could understand Giant me. Giant snake fly by, uh, slither by. Does it slither by me? No, it, it's in it, it's in the underbrush somewhere. Okay, because I was gonna say if if I if it slid by me, I was going to kill it. Depending, because since it needs to be big enough to at least eat a medium sized creature, so that's at least large. Hmm. 
It's another medium sized creature can eat. Another medium sized creature. I don't know. Um, I'm going to walk over to Devlin and I'm going to tell him, like, I suggest you try not to look so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if this, this face and this body inspires hunger. I kind of quirk an eyebrow, like, well, for a giant snake, I'm sure it did. <laughs> As long as that's out of the way, let's continue on. And Devlin just continues walking. All right. Are you, are you ready to roll, um, to roll perception? Uh, er Erebus? Yep. Alright. Okay, uh, the rest of the party. Roll perception. Alright. One spook sees nothing. <laughs> Aria uh, definitely sees nothing. Much... Ouch. Well, Devil's Pooks notice how much thick sweating and sweat that glistens off of his blanket. I, my weight shifted so the uh, end of my um, the canoe fell down in front of my eyes. So I'm still struggling to pick it back up. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> yeah, so look, you, you kind of gaze out into the jungle and you happen to see a, uh, a half-orc uh, who is probably being distracted by some kind of bird that's flying over top of him or some such thing. Either way, something that, uh... Oh, never mind. Sorry, I was looking at the five that Devil and Spooks rolled, and I thought it was yours. My bad. Sorry, you rolled the 16. So instead instead of that, you look over um, and actually saw the snake slithering away and this strange party where two two people are, are holding canoes over their heads and, uh, like, another one is just kind of backing away and making a joke. Uh, you see a kind of middle-aged woman kind of walking along with them. Uh, you see a, str a a strange man with kind of um, longish light light uh, blonde hair and a, a scar over his over the, the the right side of his face with an eye patch, uh, and a girl that looks a lot like him. That well, she's not exactly a girl. She's like more like eighteen, but she. Is just kind of like sticking very close to his side, and oh, she's eighteen, is she? Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> but she acts well like a child at the moment. Don't you? She's very quiet and clingy. Uh, there's a one of the people that's holding the canoe is a guy in armor. Uh, and what are the rest of the three of the three of you? Uh, which describe yourselves. Um, the second person holding the canoe is a ver is a furblog. Though she towers over the rest of the party, if you are any familiar with furblogs, you, are, you realize that she's actually on the shorter side of them. Uh, she has a chest. She has kind of a orangey chestnut hair. That it's raining, isn't it? It's still raining. It it's drizzling some, but yeah. Um, that is kind of frizzing up due to the humidity and the dr and the rain. She's wearing. A uh, poncho and very and very earth tone co um clothes, and as you walk into a I view, the top fr the front of the canoe actually drops down past her face, hiding her from your view. We had it surgically attached. <laughs> yes, we did. Well, Devil Spooks is about a crap. I forgot my. <laughs> I think it was six foot tall. Yeah, I'm a six foot tall, 200 pound male, with green eyes, black hair, olive colored skin, looks about 26 years old, wearing, uh, I 
entertainer's garb with leather armor over the top with a rapier at his side, a short bow slung across his back. Actually, two rapiers at his side. <laughs> and daggers in his boots. And just looking so out of place. Like, he'd be better to look like in a circus act or a magic show than here in the woods. Thick. Are you done describing how pretty you are? <laughs> He's trying to attract you, Thunk. Go with it. <laughs> it's not working. You know, so Devlin Devlin is full of himself. We yes, we know. And you're also full of shit. So anyways, you'll also see someone that towers over Devlin and uh is slightly taller than our fur blog friend, who pale white skin almost as if he's never actually seen the sun uh, and grouchy looking uh, carries a giant battle axe with him and on the backside you'll notice his pack is probably more suited for human use that or you know a normal human use than him and a nice wooden stick attached to it um, and he's got scars and what looks to be a you know scale armor at patchily put together <laughs> on top of an old battle uniform. All right. So that's what you're that's what you're seeing passing by. All right, so I imagine they're in a earshot earshot of me then. Yes. All right, well, I'm going to look over at them cuz obviously I can see that the one guy has probably noticed me and staring at me right now. So I'm going to look over and so you guys look a little lost. I really haven't seen anyone out here since the uh, group that hired me got themselves killed. We're, into Iku. We're not lost. She guides our adventures. Yeah. Oh, I will show the picture of Iku. Ah! Stupid thing. <laughs> uh, and this is who you see in front of you. Assuming that that popped up for everybody. Yep. Yeah. And she she smiles a bit. A, a bit. Oh yes, uh, I'm. We are headed for Kirsabal at the moment. Uh, where are you headed, sir? Um. Well, right now, since I'm not getting paid for the job I just did, since they died on me. I am just currently rolling about gathering any knowledge I can to take back to my uh, tribe. Oh, how fascinating. Where might, where was it you guys said you were heading? We did not say where we're heading, but if you want yes. to know, I, we're heading I, to the I land of birds. Yes. Forgot the name of the place. I was Curse about. Like, about... Last <laughs> yeah, and she said you know, it <laughs> just a minute ago. Curse about. And the, um, the okay, a hand lifts up the um canoe to to reveal the fur bog's face. Like uh, Miss Iku li literally just said that. Said that Devlin. We, we are heading to to Curse of Bob. Then she eeps as she sees the the half orc and drops the a canoe back down. <laughs> Followed by a quiet, ow. Probably said it like seven times last session. In the <laughs> name. Mm, that one with the canoe seems a little skittish. Is she alright? I, like I think she's not dead. That's all we gotta worry about. I guess she's that the most counts. Important, she's the most important member of the party. She keeps us alive. Are we, under the canoe, Aria is blushing bright red at Devlin's praise. 
I mean, you're covered in fur. How would we know you were even blushing in the first place? I think the fur True. thins out around the face so you can see coloring underneath. Mm -hmm. mm, which... Oh, no, I'm just going blank. Yeah. Do, do you wish to come with us? Well, I mean, I don't have much better to do right now, so if you guys wouldn't mind taking an extra companion, I wouldn't have an issue joining you. Well, to let you know, what am I thinking? Actually, hold on, what am I thinking? We're on a quest to look into the issue with the forever death that are not happening. Like, if you die and you get resurrected, you die again very shortly. Like, it's cursed. Like, living itself is a curse after you die the first time. That's what it seems like it's happening. We're... Ah, oh, crap. The city we're supposed to go to, uh, we could have, ooh, Iku could have guided us to that city, but the reason why we're going to the bird people first, and so the fact that I'd rather have some reconnaissance going over the city instead of going straight into unknown. That's always a good plan. It's never good to go into anywhere misinformed. I would be more than willing to join you guys then. Seems like a noble cause you guys are going after. Coin doesn't hurt either. <laughs> I was just about to say that. And after my own heart. Alright, so what direction are we heading then? Uh, Iku then points and says, We're off in this direction. Curse above. Uh, let's see here. It should take us a few days to get to Oolong, Oolong and then we should be able to take the river up to Curse above, and it's only one day after, after the river till there. Uh, Arya here is quite good at making sure we are all fed and hydrated. She's even generously generously helped out with the bug protection as well. Hmm. So another sort Arya of lift. The fur the fur bug. Um, Arya lifts up the canoe again and kind of. Looks over to you and kind of gives a wave, but ends up dropping the canoe again on her head. She curses <laughs> in goblin. <laughs> that one's going to be a fun one to be around. Not really. Not also, she's, she's trying to find the. She's trying to find the perfect person to eat her bird with. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. That's that's there next to her is. An axe beak. Uh, you'd probably be familiar with axe beaks at, at this point. They are large birds that often travel in small groups and often are often very honorary. Um, this one looks like it's a juvenile. Uh, I, I equate them to uh, the, bir the birds known as cassaways in real life. Axe beaks basically make me think of much larger cassaways with an axe-shaped beak. <laughs> Also, isn't there a pseudo dragon around? Um, yeah, the, the, dragon. The, fa the fairy dragon doesn't always make itself known, though. And right now, the fairy dragon is invisible, but it's still with it is still with Dozel, yes. At, wait, was it Thunk who said um, the bird, or was that you, Devlin? I think it was Thunk. Thunk. Finding the uh, perfect, we, from... uh, friend. 
Who uh, are you? From under the canoe, you hear a muffled, Thunk, don't you dare! <laughs> I can tell already this is going to be an interesting group. Might even be some people I learn to trust outside my clan or tribe. The, the the otherwise quiet uh, blonde uh, one-eyed man kind of like turns his blue eye on you, uh, and kind of asks, "Which tribe do you belong to?" Your accent that makes me think you're from Kolar. Uh, you mm-hmm. would recognize his accent as someone from Amlarn, by the way. Okay, so you may be correct. Um... Unfortunately, I forgot to catch the name on that truck. A bit. You guys get to catch name on the trucks? There's no trucks in the world. <laughs> tribe. You, you can make up whatever name you want for your tribe. There, there's plenty of um, you know small tri- of tribes down down that way. That there's you know, plenty of room for people coming up with their own. Uh, sh- shall we continue? Yes, let's continue while our new friend contemplates the party he uh, appears with. <laughs> Just because I forgot, did you specify what your job was amongst your old party? I he was know. the guide. Oh yeah, I guess I did. You're the tour okay. guide. He's holding the giant sign that says, follow me. Um, I am from the Krusk clan, um, or tribe. And I was actually hired to kind of guide and protect, which obviously, I mean, there's two other protectors there. I was more the guide, a group from these corporation through this area as I am very familiar or not familiar with this area but very good at navigating through landscapes and whatnot. So you did you purposely lead them into danger or did that just accidentally happen? Because you got to be no. careful which way you answer this, because all I can think is either you killed everybody or you're a terrible guide. <laughs> no, so we actually stopped for to make camp. The other two actual protectors were, they were the ones that are pretty much to be doing the actual um, protection for them. I was just helping them get through terrain and how to navigate around areas. When I went out to forage for our food for the next few days, they uh, came under attack. And when I came back to the camp, they were all just dead. Ah, okay. Oh, how terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. I whispered to Thick, uh, bet you five gold he's just a terrible guide. <laughs> Make it ten. We are here. <laughs> you. All right. So, you're all camping together that night. Uh, who's on what shift? As as always, um, take... Kyle is is standing, you know, sitting watch before a fire, mostly just keeping an take eye on first. his daughter. Will I'm taking. Uh, will take first. I mean, ah. I'll take second. 
And as always, uh, Maria offers her tent to, uh, to Ty. And Ty goes inside the tent. I'll take last. Uh, well, um, uh, during my watch, I'm kind of, I'm writing in the, uh, book that I got from Zantana's things with Think Pen. Yeah. Just kind of looking around, writing a few things. And let's see, long rest, long rest. We love long rest. All right. I did my perception. Uh, Devlin, I need the monk's perception. Don't forget right. our uh, guides. Yeah, I I, I was, was rolling them up just manually. I like to have I was our Febreze. New guy. Oh. <laughs> I, I like the, the feel of real dice in my hands for certain things. It's nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So that particular evening goes off without a hitch. And the rain subsides. It is no longer raining. Aria looks uh, marginally disappointed that it is not raining anymore. You guys wake up. And it seems like it's ripe to continue the journey. Alright, as usual, I take 10 minutes, and after we all got, I get the water, and then I purify the water for everyone. Would you guys like me to, uh, to roll every day at this point, or would you guys like to move to the next actionable point, and me just making a few, um, mega rolls? And we can go with, you know, two perceptions... I'm forever keeping watch and uh, at least one survival check. What do you guys think? I think actionable next. Yeah. Devlin is disappearing for a little bit. He is checking on his pork butt. <laughs> okay. You should go see a doctor about that. That just sounds like a pretty big issue. Uh, pork butt is a great cut of, cut of meat. It is inexpensive, but when it's properly cooked... It tastes really good, and it melts in your mouth. Like, just, for some reason, it's considered a cheap cut of meat. It's... I just made Thanksgiving dinner. Nice. I made turkey soup with uh, some of my leftovers, and I'm going to make a turkey pot pie tomorrow night. Nice. I cooked at my work today. That's enough. Mm. I'm not cooking this. I'm not sleeping over on my stove or anything. So. Okay. Alright, so who, who's manning the perception on this? I'll take the first perception for the first day. So two, two of them? Yeah, for, for basically just roll two perception and it'll count for all of the all, but for all the days excuse me, days and nights. And I'll make you a roll to see if you get into any serious trouble uh, along the way. And I'm looking Beyond. at my map right now to see how many days until the next location. Well. My dice don't like me. I had that nice 16 streak during the persuasion. Okay. Hmm. Not bad. 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven days go by. One of those di the, those days, uh, on in fact, actually, on the first day into into the into here, uh, you encounter a tribe of goblins. I they are all wearing those little masks. You remember running into such such beings before? I immediately greet them in goblin. Which you know gives them pause, it's like, and they one of them greets back hesitantly. You speak our language. Who are you, tall one? Like I'm Maria, and my big sister is a goblin, and my big brother too. Roll persuasion. All right. Let's see. Ah, damn. Actually, roll it with advantage because you speak goblin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, dice gods, dice gods say no. Uh, so, on the first day of your of your journey, you do encounter that group of goblins. You try to make to make friendly conversation with them, but they're not buying it. Uh, the goblins begin to stack them, to stack up on top of each other, kind of forming these little mini totem poles, so that they are now eye to eye with with you. Um, um. Okay. I offer them each a good berry. There are 13 of them in front of you. Uh, look like they're ready to strike, but now you you offer food. You may make right, so what use... you may make one more persuasion check. Let's fight dice god, please. Oh. <laughs> but before before you are you're holding out the bead, but uh Thunk and Devlin and um and Erebus you all see that these goblins are acting incredibly aggressive. Um, what would you like to do before before Arya can pull that bead out? That bead, yeah, that good berry out. Sorry. Uh, so we all noticed that they're being aggressive. You said that. Yes, you have no idea what they're saying, but they are definitely showing aggressive stance. Uh, they're climbing on top of each other. They look like they're getting ready to impale Arya with a spear. Uh, Arya seems to be fumbling something with her hands, but you don't don't know exactly what she's doing. Uh, Folks, looking at them, we'll try to speak in thieves' cant to see if any of them will respond in kind, aka rogue speak. Okay. okay. These are so diplomatical. Devlin, evens or odds? Evens. Hey, Oreo. None of them respond. Well, I tried. How, I how far are they? I summon a psychic blade in my hand. Funk, you're up. What do you do? How far are they? Uh, I imagine Arya went up to them, so they're probably about 20 feet away. Is Arya in the way? Arya? Arya? Yeah. Probably unthinking silly. Because I've never had a bad experience with goblins. <laughs> yeah, but we all have. Uh, so I'm going to take three steps to the right and try to get a good view of them and throw my great axe at them to knock okay. their stack over. Okay, Dozel is not 
there. Uh, Arya, you should have healed up by now. Your token yeah, still I did. shows. Uh, oh, did you? That's because I didn't do. <laughs> yeah. Didn't do. Yeah. Okay. So Let's tie oh, yeah. and now I have to find my token. There I am. Let me change this back to. There, it was a red one. Yeah. So I should be at. Uh, like that, 27. What the? Uh, stupid thingy. Hate when that happens. Uh, oh, ah, definitely hate when that happens. Somehow it switched onto a different page. Oh no. Mm. It's okay. It's loading. Yay. So that's you guys. You're like right here. Dev uh, Thunk, you moved a bit. So you're like right there, I believe. Yep. We have goblins. Fun time. What? See, so they don't have the better picture in here, the one of the uh, the got this particular type of goblin. Actually, there are fourteen goblins here because there's also a goblin boss. I'm sure Sorry, I thought that I was guy. talking to my daughter. It's okay. I'll fix that in a minute. So, So this is pretty much what you see in front of you. So I think you're, in, in this case, we can put, pretend this is mostly a 3D map because these guys are stacked. Uh, think you're throwing it at like this guy, the, the bottom of this stack over here. Yes. All right. Roll of attack. All right. Oh, hold on. Totally just turned on Star Wars. <laughs> Sorry, doing homework and this at the same time, so I'm trying to click on the right symbols. All right, that hit. That would definitely hit. How much damage? Am I surprising them? Yes. So I would do this at advantage, right? It, yeah, you don't need to roll anymore, though. Uh, that's enough to, to kill the goblin that's down below. Maybe much just, just hit it right in the center of the chest with, with that. And the other two goblins now fall prone as they fall off the, the totem. All right, so at, with my, my bonus action, if you would say, I'd pull out my bow. You pull out your bow and. Well, I don't have a second attack, so that's literally it. I just ah, pull okay. out my bow and get ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, roll intimidation. I was like, roll what? Intimidation.
as you like roar at them, the goblin boss in the middle uh, kind of like waves at something in the air and points at you. Time for initiative. <laughs> I even took one out. Am I still pulling out the good berries or can I just kind of smack my forehead? You can smack your forehead. Yeah, I smack my forehead and I start grumbling in a uh, giant of all things that I had things perfectly under control. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put the group minders over in the corner so that I don't have to worry about which one's getting getting killed. Because they're the ones that I'm going to roll the initiative off of. Oh, I guess I could have just charged them too. But I still would have to waste the time picking up my axe. Well, technically, you can pick up your axe as a movement action uh, one free time. Yeah, but that's, it's all the way over there at the moment. Yeah, I know. I'd have to. I would lose all my, my walking distance. Yeah, but then also you could rage, and they're within 30 feet. Oh, that's true. Give me a second to finish setting up the colors. Can I take back my pull out my bow? No, you already did that. Sorry. Dang, okay. Free drop it. And then pick it up later. I, I might as well just shoot and run up as I do. I mean, using the bow at this distance anyways is useless for me. If you hear that meowing, that's my cat being a dumbass. Why a dumbass? Because it keeps uh, meowing at a locked door. Yeah, they do that. Come here. Oh, good. Alrighty. I'm not the last one to go. Uh, um, let's see. Erebus... What you do for initiative is that you select the token, uh, then you go onto your sheet and hit the initiative thing, and it should automatically load you onto initiative. All right. Or if you if you rolled that without selecting your token first, you can, I'm going to go to your token and I'm going to hit add turn, and I'm going to manually type in the initiative you just rolled. Uh, Seven point one five that he rolled earlier. Oh, that's the one he rolled. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. Well, Devlin Spooks is always helpful. <laughs> so, wow, that the goblins are mostly in the same area anyway. <laughs> oh, well. And I'm a friend of the line. <laughs> goes anyway. Devlin! You saw Thunk draw first blood. Okay, so I need distances. Okay, so from my character, thirty-five feet. Okay, so 40. that is fine. The devil and spooks is spooks is gonna stay where he's at. Pull out his psychic, uh, psychic blade, and hold. Until a friend of his is near a goblin or near goblins. Okay. Sometimes waiting for sneak attack. Got it. And that's my turn. Uh, Aria, what would you like to do? Aria, um, can I roll persuasion to tell the goblin boss to that he needs to run, or else, um. That you know, would run and save the rest of his tribe. That would be intimidation, but you would ha be at a disadvantage at this point. Intimidation, not persuasion for telling him, please run, please, you know, get out of here. 
Is that in your best interest? He, he, he doesn't, he's not going to respond to that. So intimidation is the only, even if it's a please, at this point it's considered intimidation. All right. Well, then I'll do intimidation at disadvantage because Aria does not really want to fight a goblin. And let me roll that again. She's being very polite about this intimidation. All right. Is there anything else you wish to do? Um, would I see if they reacted to my words? Because depending on how they react, I'm going to either move back to the line and get out of the front view or stay in place. Roll perception. Those masks, it's hard to tell. But you think you might have heard the, the, the a sharp intake of breath coming from the chief. All right. Um. Well, then I'm just going to move back five feet. About uh, you know, five feet. So I'm not exactly in melee range. All right. You know, just kind of take a step back. All right. End of turn. All right, goblin boss. I think. Hold on. Oh, it's one of those goblins. Hold on, I'm gonna move these tokens down here. They're they're not usable for anything, but uh, yeah, that tell me which one it is. It's the blue rank. So the goblins are kind of looking at each other. Uh, this particular totem stack. Moves over this way a bit. And the one at the top uh, will... F yeah, hold on a second. I'm just checking something real quick. I'm just checking to see if the battle stacks can actually it can oh, this attack yeah only the goblin at the top of the stack can attack but they can all move so the goblin up top uh, being held whose legs are being held by the goblin below it uh, takes out its short bow and fires at thunk. They're actually standing on top of each other or is it just yes, this one? Yes, they're they're stacked up. That's why these two are on the ground currently. It's so that way they actually stand semi like a normal human being in height wise. Yes. Uh, they just fired an arrow at you, Thunk. Uh, 15. That is equal to my armor. Which means it hits. Oh, uh, you actually keep that with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it does you good when you're fighting the enemy. Exactly. It should be that I hit on a match and they don't. Sorry. And you're not even raging yet, so you take the full seven points of damage. Let's see. Orange stack. Oops. The orange stack rushes at you, Thunk. And because they're stacked up like this, they actually get advantage on on hitting you. With uh, melee. With my reaction, if he, if they get into combat, would my reaction stack first? Now that's a good question. Actually, yes, it would. You see that you see the tower of go of goblinoids rushing right at Thunk. Oh, he disappeared. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, because remember my cause was as soon as a yeah, I know. I, I said I said I'm waiting for you. 
All right, so um, I'm going to attack the one on the bottom. Okay. Sixteen to hit. That does it. And it's 18 dead. Eighteen damage. These two go spilling out onto the ground, unable to attack. Don't you love your rogue who just stands there and does <laughs> and stays I will stay sixty feet away from everyone? <laughs> so so this goblin here uh, picks, takes out its short bow and fires at Thunk as well. Ouch. Yeah, you got another arrow in the shoulder, buddy. You're being used as a pin an arrow in the knee. If you were an arrow in the knee, you'd have to re-roll on a whole new character. Okay, both of these goblins uh, stand up. They have half movement. Uh, this one goes here and fires at Thunk. Another one. This one moves here and fires at Thunk. That one actually misses you. <laughs> and now it's your turn. Well, I think I am just going to drop my bow and uh, you uh, grab my quarter staff. that I know it, it's just a quarter staff at the moment. <laughs> and run up and hit this guy right here. Uh, and I'm which, also which one? Rage. Okay. You I'm have advantage. You have advantage because that one is on the ground currently. All right. First of all. I'll do my my rage. Uh, sorry, everybody within a thirty foot radius. Who's that, everyone? Well, hopefully you don't roll at eight, six. What happens on 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 a six? Do you say thirty foot range? <laughs> Arcane energy taps into the minds of those around you. Each creature within 30 feet of you must succeed a wisdom throw, or you see a glimpse of the creature's thoughts, learning how it plans to attack you. As a result, the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the start of your next turn. So All right. I'm at a disadvantage to attack Thick until his next turn. It also creates an advantage if I can know where you're going to attack so I can also help. What do you want? What? I'm at disadvantage to attack thick. Well, at least we didn't take any damage because little one's token's right there, and if you killed little one, I would leave. Yeah. I would tie you up for the goblins. <laughs> Yeah, so... Anything less than a 13. Hold on. So one, two, three. Yeah, the one directly in front of you, this one here, is the only one that succeeded. Uh, actually, uh, that one and this one over here succeeded on their wisdom saving throws. One thing, actually, are you looking at a new one? The new one? Oh, you know, that's right. They officially made it. Uh, no, I have not looked at the new one. I need to do that. I thought you were still Let me post. Backs. I will post it in roll 20. This is the new one. For six. You rolled a six, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now I have a, a 16. <laughs> All right. I know, but, and, and the wisdom saving is just pointless now. But yeah. it changed, uh, with the new book, It this one is now official class. He is now an official class. Yeah, and since I have yeah, the, that, since, the since I have Tasha in, in, in my uh, compendium, you can use it here in Roll20. 
Awesome. So I have my right. also have it in on D and D Beyond. <laughs> so a double compendium share. What Excellent. The, uh... Oh shit! I gotta look up mine because that just came, just became official. Also. The goblin is currently down on the ground. You have advantage on hitting it with the melee. And you said you're currently raging, correct? Raging and using the staff of power to whack him in the face since I cannot actually use the staff of power. <laughs> <laughs> so that has the stats of a quarter staff. Go ahead. Roll it. I was trying to remember what the stats were. <laughs> I think it's a D8 or D10, depending. Yeah. Are you using it one-handed or two-handed? Uh, give me a second, because I'm going to have to read this only real quick on my character sheet. Wow. Said, because full knife just became official. It's a D6. I add my strength modifier to it, right? Yes, you do. Oh, I forgot to do the, uh, to hit. Hold on. So there's my damage if I hit. Uh, well, that doesn't hit. <laughs> Not even for well, advantage? That one doesn't either. Oh, yeah, well, you have an advantage. Roll, roll again. Well, that first, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't actually hit okay. still. These things have high AC. So, so the 12 doesn't hit either? Correct. Fun. Next attack? Would be someone else. I'm done. <sighs> Green stack. Green stack maneuvers over this way, and the top one fires a, a short bow round at Thunk. And misses. Erebus, you're up. All right. I'm going to aim over at the blue stack, and I'm just going to use my... Bottom, blue. top, or middle? I'm going to go after the bottom. All right. Okay, so I just redid my character sheet a little bit. I'll just just select the new official. um, And not much changed. Nothing really changed on mine. <laughs> but, but now it's to be officially to supported. To, yeah. Thick, you should be able to go into D and D Beyond, and when you go to edit character sheet, uh, go back to your uh, pick a primal path, and then the drop down menu, it should have your the official one above the one that you currently are. So it's called Path of Wild Magic now, right? Yes. All right. Let me see. Yeah, Path Path of Wild Magic. Your current one should have should be like a V.2 archived. Yeah, it says archived, but it still says wild soul on it. Yeah. And then Arya is doesn't have to worry about her. Erebus is yeah. So Erebus, go ahead and do your stuff. Yeah, um So you're aiming at blue. Um how do you do? Do I just okay. do a roll d20 on this thing? I'm what you do... That, that's cool. No, no worries. I got you. Uh, so what you do is you go into your sheet, you look under the core tab, and there should be a grouping of weapons, and I'm looking at them right now, in, or in spells. Uh, spear one-handed, spear two-handed, short sword, longbow, you can also cast cure wounds, and you can assign a hunter's mark. 
Uh, if there is needed use of Colossal Slayer, which I do not believe this qualifies, you can toggle this this damage modifier down below on or on or off. Nice. That goes right through that one goblin's eye and just it, it, it just flattens it to the ground, causing the other two to fall. All right. I'm liking this virtual style now. Yeah, the only th the only thing is that you do have to keep track of your arrows on your sheet. There is uh, right above your list of traits, like you know, favorite enemy, natural explorer. There should be a like you know, there's the divine sense, and yep, there's the arrows. You got it. That just keeps helps you keep track of them. Goblin boss, goblin boss did look taken aback at Arya's thing, but. The, um, the the others were still you know amped up by uh, the boss's earlier earlier commands, so they've been being around. But the boss is looking a bit frazzled, from what you can tell, Arya, because you know goblin body language a bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. The way that this particular person is like playing with their hands, uh, though you can't see their face because of the mask. Uh, they do seem a bit nervous and look like they are taking a few steps back. They don't look like they're about to control the situation. More like possibly getting the hell out of here. I kind of let out a sigh of relief that not all of them will die. Kyle kind of like puts a hand on his hilt and calls out, Do you guys need my help for this one or do you have it handled? He glances over at Are with this. Are we kind of mothers like I had it handled? <laughs> and she's kind of giving Thunk the stink eye. You were fumbling and they were getting ready to stab you. I kind of look at him like Remind me whose siblings are goblins between us. Remind me who's been to war before. So who won? And who's next? Uh, Kyle was the one calling out to you guys as, as to whether or not you wishes wishes aid. Always. Okay. Give me one second. I'm pulling out a... Uh, one of my assets that I have access to here. Uh, what was it? Oh, no, that's cool. Ah, here we go. Because I have this thing called area of effect, and I like to be able to know uh, how far away think certain things are. Makes it much easier to cast spells. Like what I did with mine in my little circle. Yeah. So I think I'm going to use this. Twenty feet from the spot. One second. That looks quite big, but let's see. Hmm. 
I'm gonna double check on reading that. Sleep spell. Um Sleep spell. spell was thirty foot radius. What? Thirty foot radius, I thought it was. Within twenty feet of a point you choose within creatures within twenty feet of a point you choose. Oh, so yeah. I do believe this would be that does look to be twenty feet according to the the thing I got, but it just feels bigger than I than I would like. Oh well. It's twenty feet. Yep. Sometimes it sometimes I'm just looking at something and go, that can't be right and have to scientifically prove it is. Hold on. I, I wanted to make some of these spells, basically, so that anyone can just pull them out and, dro and drop them down. Um, I've seen people do that uh, on certain things, and I, like, really liked it, because it's, like, you know, so friggin' easy to deal with um, once everybody... Ugh. That way, I, just, I only have to do it once, and nobody else to do it again. No, that's not what I want here. There we go. Alright. Now the sleep spell's there. So, that's w pretty much what he is doing. Uh, it... Yeah. It won't hit Arya. It'll hit these stacks plus that. He is casting sleep. Basically just raises one hand and just kind of throws it at it there. Kind of see the, the spell kind of like fl pretty much floating through the air. And going for that. Yeah. And that hits 16 points worth of hit points. So what do we got here? Uh, this goblin goes unconscious. See, what do I want for sleep? Which one of these token thingies is good for sleep? Yeah, I'll go I'll the first right intake. My dog's barking at the door. Now that's 14 points. Yeah, so those two both go unconscious. There we go. Cal kind of nods. There we go. Uh, Devil and Spooks, you're up. As you see, two of the goblins just kind of keel over and start storing on the ground. Devlin? Sorry, I'm eating also. So, ah. this one I'm going to attack for a 25 to hit. You're hiding first? No. Oh, oh, I see. Which one are you attacking? Okay. Uh, that's a disadvantage because it's on the ground. And you're throw you're, you're it's a this is a missile attack. It wasn't his turn yet to stand up. What? I'm saying it wasn't his turn to stand up yet, so. Yeah. Never mind that. One. That this is. Actually, wait a minute. Let me look at some things real quick. Some features. Psychic MG. Second. Then I look at something for rogues and their full nice abilities. But yes, it'll be a twenty-five to hide over 
behind little one. Okay. You're currently stealth after failing to hit the goblin with the psychic blade. Check psychic. Shit, I have no long range with my psychic with my blades. It's just a normal range of sixty feet. Interesting. Uh Okay, so the, what I'm thinking of, it would be at ninth level I would get it. So never mind. My hiding is right now. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah, can turn. I dress? Can I dress all the goblins, or does it have to be a specific goblin? You can you, you can yell at all of them if you like. All right, I want to yell at all of them. Um, with another intimidation roll, telling them to run, to run while they still can? Yes. Alright. I am not intimidating at all. You're just standing there, stamping your foot. Well, not... But then I'm... I've, hang on, that's the wrong one. Alright, I'm gonna get, uh, use my movement, you know, come over here. I clearly do not want to see the massacre that's gonna happen. Okay. Is that it? I go, hi. Yep. End of turn. Okay. Blue goblins pick themselves up, having lost their, their bottom goblin. Uh, and they want to look at the person who did this. This goblin over here takes aim at Erebus. This goblin over here also takes aim at Erebus. Both of them miss. So the orange, the orange pick themselves up. All right. They come around thunk, flanking him with pack tactics. So that's doubling up on, on their advantage attacks. First one misses completely, the second one. Double advantage. What? I mean, you don't get double advantage. I I know that, but they just circled <laughs> him anyway. My point is is that they still ended up, one of them did get a nat 20 on, on you, uh, thunk. So you take five points of damage thanks to your uh, thanks to your your rage. It's, it's not here. Oh, um, I think he's here. I thought he said "be right back" or something like that. And he just vanished. Oh no. Maybe he had to disconnect. Yay, really welcome nice. back. So you took, in total, thanks to your rage, five points of damage from a goblin. Yeah. Next goblin. I was here for some reason. Yeah. I didn't uh, say anything. That one is fast asleep. Next goblin, one of it's fast asleep. The other one comes over here and thinks the pack tactics has advantage on you, Thunk, as it fires an arrow at you. Wait, be he's within 60 feet. Wouldn't he get disadvantage for using a short bow? Do you? Zero yeah, to sixty feet short bow is, is regular. Oh, actually, five to sixty feet is regular. Um, regular. Sixty to three twenty is disadvantage. disadvantage. You just can't is be it? within me. I it was you, you, no, no, you can't be within melee no. range. Okay, no, eighty. Okay, so for short bows, it is like ten feet to eighty feet. They have normal range, so they can fire without disadvantage. But long range, unless they have sharp your feet, 
80 feet to 320 feet, he would have disadvantage. And anything up close uh, within melee range of you also, also gives you disadvantage. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then it so yeah, that an 18 would I believe still hits you. Yep. So you take three points of damage. <sighs> and it is now your turn. You're surrounded by goblins. All right. So I'm hitting the guy right in front of me. Obviously. Okay. How much damage? You bring your Eight points of damage. You bring your blade down and, and and end up splitting that goblin's head uh, open, just like cracking the mask in parts parts as the brain slides out. Uh, you mean cracked his skull because I'm using a bow or a uh, quarter staff. Yeah, you bring it, you brought it down hard enough to break to break the head open and crack the mask in part. Any more uh, movements at this point? Uh, nope. I don't, I don't think I even have a bonus action that I can use. Okay. Green stack. The green stack, whoops. Green stack moves and is now in front of you. Attacks with advantage. And still misses. Erebus. All right, I'm going to help him out and I'm going to aim at go after that orange one that's right behind him. All right. Unfortunately, that misses the, the arrow just kind of clattering to the ground next to them. Anything else you can do? Nah, that's going to be it right now. Alrighty. Goblin bus. It's kind of looks at you guys, looks at the goblins who are kind of like rushing all in for, for, for blood and continues to run and scamper away. Need to hurry up and uh, get to level 14 so I can just keep constantly hitting rage. <laughs> Kyle. It'd be pretty dangerous for everyone around me, though. <laughs> Kyle pulls out, p pulls out what looks like a a glowing blade from from off his back, and just kind of moves towards this goblin over here. And ends up missing as the goblin somehow senses him coming and da dances out of the way of the. Of of the light blade. I don't think I have extra attack. Oh, nope. I can attack again because I he's a higher level than you guys. But he then swings it around again. And this time, as the goblet attempts to dance away, he just gets neatly bisected by the blade. And you see the two the two halves of the goblin all cauterized, just kind of sliding to the ground. Devlin. This bottom one is going to get... That's shit. Here. So attack the green one. Since, uh, since I'm not hit anymore, because people moved in my way... <laughs> That's a try miss. To hide behind, I'll try to hide behind Airbus. How tall are you, Airbus? Taller than Devlin? 
Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Devlin manages to vanish in the gr in in the uh, the brush. Six foot tall human hides in the brush. Yes. I'm one with the brush, and the brush is with me. <laughs> Are you? Um, I'm not going. I see thick. And I'm, you know, kind of chewing, thinking about casting, uh, healing him. And after a moment, I'm going to cast Healing Word on him. <coughs> Which heals him for six. Nice, you gain back six and, health points. Link. And that's it. Close to my dinner plate. <coughs> nice. What's that yellow thing? Oh, red. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Are you okay? Yeah, my throat's just dry. Okay. As long as it's not the corona, we're good. I, I would hope not. Because if, it, if and... it is, my parents are in infected, and as far as I know, they're not. Okay. Yeah, it's cornbread, pants it, and smoked pork butt. Right. Yeah, they don't notice. So, these two guys move closer, and both fire arrows at thunk. Oh, and one of them's at advantage. I mean, one of them's at, uh, thing. Do you still have, uh, 16? Oh, even if you still have 16, they both hit you. Wait, so they're at advantage against me right now? Yeah, pack tact. Uh, these particular type you of goblins have pack tactics. There's a guy, and but okay. I thought pack tactics <coughs> were flanking, not no. on top of each other. No, no, no. Flak tactics is anything within five feet, uh, even with if even with missile damage, uh, give to advantage. These say particular type of goblins happen to have it. Okay. <coughs> so they still get advantage even though they're within five feet of me. So pack tactics. The ones in blue are shooting at you. The, the, the ones, these guys are right allies. Here. They're what within I'm five feet. We just, they just described that within five feet using a bow they would not have advantage. No, 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 no. The green they, ones are attacking you. The blue ones do not need to have advantage. Uh, sorry, do not need to be within five feet of you. They just need to have an ally within five feet of you. That happens to be the green stack in front of you. Oh, gotcha. I thought you were talking about the green ones right in front of me. My bad. No, nope, this is blue that's attacking. Confusion. I, I think earlier that's also confusion happened too, maybe. No, I got it now. I was getting really confused for a second. Alright. So you took your damage from that. <coughs> that one's asleep. Half of that one is asleep. The other one also has advantage. Shorting a bow at you. Yeah, poor, poor Goliath is just getting filled up with arrows. That's Lord. his job. He's a barbarian. Mm-hmm. And now it is the barbarian's turn. My favorite part is I am the only one that has killed anybody besides Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I killed someone. No, I killed somebody. Oh, I... Aria I hasn't killed outside. anyone, and we're staying with that. Anyways, I'm going to, once again, attack the people right in front of me. <coughs> what else would you do? Well, there's a bird I'm going to kill after this, coward. That's a miss. If I live. Okay. 
you should have held on to your act right there. I'm getting to that point where I think I should have, yeah. Green stack. They're opening up another wound on you. Erebus. Never mind. Right. I'm going to take care of the, uh, or try to take care of. Oh, uh, hey. Try to take care of the, um, blue one that's furthest away right now. All right. Uh, that would be this one over here. Oh, you're not logged in, so I guess you aren't seeing me do that. Yeah, it's saying my connection has been interrupted. I'm sorry that you keep having connection issues. Why? Now I see it. Yeah, that one. Okay, so, yeah, this one here? Yep. Alright, cool. Unfortunately, that misses. <laughs> Had the one good shot. Oh, sorry. I, I thought I thought that got stuck on you, Thunk. No, I, I'm the one that put it there. <laughs> All right, Goblin Bus has successfully fled the battlefield. Kyle comes forward, puts a hand on your back, Thunk, and you feel a pulse of cure wounds going through you. Heal up for seven. <sighs> Devlin. My advantage kicks in. I'm gonna attack that green one. Which level? Give me a sec. I don't care. Uh, roll with advantage. All right. Which which level? Bottom one. Okay. That's sixteen. All right, that hits. And that kills that damage. one. And then. Uh, Plus five. Do, 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 do. Okay, so here's a bonus action that is not me hiding uh i can throw a second psychic blade which i'll go through that one okay like that 19 why do you still have advantage oh it's your right you're uh, no you were lost hidden uh, after the first attack so you wouldn't Unless you're like two, both blades uh, issue out at the at the same time, which uh, action he and bonus action didn't say. Uh, I believe after the first the first strike, you lose um you lose your hide status. It's bonus. It's action and bonus action. So no, it's not gonna stack with that. Uh, do I still want to do that then? Yeah. So that ten misses. Yeah. And so I'll come back around to a little one, like this. <laughs> and that's my turn. Arya! Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Thunk at the second level.
And that's my turn. That Monk heals gets... you for nine, Thunk. Monk gets more healing. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, you better be thanking me. The goblins turn tail and start running. That goblin's asleep. Half of that goblin's asleep. The other one <coughs> sees those ones on the ground and also takes off running. Thunk! So they're still prone, right? Yep. Green stack is prone. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the other two over there are also prone, but they're asleep. They're not really fighting anything right now. Alright, I'm gonna walk up and, uh, smash them. Okay. Maybe. Yep, that hits. Yay! Uh, roll a roll a second d twenty just to see if you get it if, if you get uh, a natural twenty. Just a regular twenty. Yeah, just a regular twenty because all you're looking for is to see if you get a nat twenty or not, and you don't. So that one is still alive. Nope. It's bleeding profusely, but that that goblin is still alive. Anything else you can do? Would grapple be considered a movement action or an attack action? Attack action. I'm pretty sure it's an attack action. I thought so. I was pretty sure it was too, but I wasn't. 100%. That means I'm dead. Alright. And those goblins now stand up. This goblin comes around here, uh, and they both attack you with their scimitars. They don't even realize that the rest of, the rest of the goblins in the tribe are all running away. Erebus. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to take out that red one that's asleep right now. All right, that you would have disadvantage, so that arrow misses. He's got disadvantage on a sleeping goblin. It's on the ground, and he's, he's using a missile weapon. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot he was prone too. Yeah. <laughs> I I know. It's just funny. <laughs> so Kyle kind of shoots you a look, Erebus, and says, "We really shouldn't be killing ones that are." currently not a threat. Oh, I plan to. Better to take care of them when they're not a threat before they become a threat. It's easy enough to Aria tie them looks... up. And Aria Kyle... kind of looks a little distressed. <laughs> Kyle moves over here and uh, goes in to attack the one next to Thunk. Misses, attacks again. Misses again. Devlin. It's actually going to move up to here. 35 feet of movement. I have 35 feet of movement. I'm going to pull out the rope from um, from somebody's pack. And I'll <laughs> tie up this goblin. All right. What do you want me to roll? Nothing. He's asleep. You okay. just spend your turn tying up a goblin. Aria. Okay. Yep. Um. See, well, seeing they're they're killing goblins, wait, wait. Sunk okay. seems to be in pretty. First. Can I say something first? Okay. We got a hostage. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um. Said so seeing the goblins are they're probably about to be dead. Thunk and T Kyle are at it. Thunk's in pretty good health. Um, I'm just gonna kind of be over here slowly having a mental breakdown. Nothing. I'm doing nothing right now. Alright. Wait, isn't this... 
yours. Isn't this whole campaign already just having a slow mental breakdown? <laughs> Blue goblins run away into the brush. I feel like she might be the uh, the bad guy in this and is trying to save all the bad guys. Black goblin's asleep. No, no. Red goblin also run, runs away, but I can't delete that yet because the other one is both asleep and tied up. Hunk. Here we go again on my own. We're swinging miss and now I'm running home. <laughs> but if you run, you take an attack of opportunity. I wouldn't actually run. I've been getting beat You're... up this whole time. I ain't even tried to move. <laughs> Have you ever seen the thick run? The green goblin Towards still danger. still strike it thick. Ooh, ouch! It's hit for six. Erebus. I'm going to move over here so I can get a clear shot, then go after that green one right in front of me. Alrighty. That misses, unfortunately. Maybe terrible guide and a terrible shot. <laughs> hey, my first shot was excellent. Now I can't hit yes, anything. Yes, it was. Kyle swings his blade. Actually, he doesn't have advantage on that. Can't we have pack tactics? Oh, no, he should. He should have advantage because he would have moved there. Uh, so, yeah, that one's dead. At which point he moves over here. And strikes this one down. And says... All of the combatants are taken care of. The rest have fled into the jungle. This one, too? I'm tying that one up. We got hostages. While y'all are tying them up, uh, Maria kind of picks herself up and begins to gather the dead goblin bodies. I'm going to search them first. They may not have much, but they hit me, and I don't like it. Oh. Kyle goes, Kyle goes to assist Arya. Uh, roll investigation for all of you who are currently searching the bodies. I think that's an eight. And I will be right back. I really need some water. Okay. I do assure you that Aria is not the villain in this game. <laughs> she would be a horrible villain. Are you? Perfect she's design. too kind and caring for her own good. But you know, exactly. she's only kind and caring about the bad ones. And the animals. And the animals. And the animals. Yeah. Yeah. While the DM's gone, I am going to slit both of your throats in the night. Which is us. We have hostages slash people to interrogate. Uh, I, I, I just plan to murder them. We found See, the big guy in this campaign. Well, now I've got to fight thick. <laughs> <laughs> All we have to do is point him at the goblins and don't refuse to help and refuse to help him. So pretty much find one useful scimitar, two useful short bows, um, only two arrows that look like they can be used for any for anything, and. Uh, only one usable set of uh, of leather armor, but it's sized for a goblin. Uh, they don't appear to have any money on The arrow can go to uh, amazing marksmen back there. Uh, so, how, for collecting your own arrows, Erebus, uh, you take how many arrows you, sh you, you shot, 
you add one and you roll that number. Uh, to roll random numbers, you do this, roll 1D number. You just type the number after the 1D. Yes. Well, the 1d6 is... And you manage to reach them. Others are either too broken or have completely vanished somewhere in the... ...found with, like, two extra arrows, and they're going to you. So you got your... <laughs> Back to my pony. <laughs> I have Yay. a full quiver, so I'm not worried about getting any more. Here, I've never... I've not used any arrows yet. <laughs> Well, I use five. I won't did anything. That's my power. People and hostages are asleep. Fits from the butt. In kind of. They're coming. Going off. Where are they camping? Wait, who are you? Uh, a revelin is doing. Well, picked them the head. Common. And levels, you, you should not be threatened. There's something at first that it's stacking up on our swords. The more you still are. are we... We're gonna kill them yet. Oh, Devil's gonna like Arya and that Devlin. Exactly why. Always. Oh, 